29 of the Hobby Hammer cast. I'm joined today by Miles, as ever. Yes, as ever, because you can't get anyone else on here. Well, that, that's it. I've, I've tried. I've tried. And plus, we're on your channel now. Yes, yeah, so plus, we're on my channel. So I guess I should... Uh, okay. As ever, we introduce Max to the uh, issue. Hello. Yeah. You didn't say uh, hi. Hi, Max. I'll just do, complete <laughs> the joke that wasn't made. But... Yeah, I've got a new studio, Miles. We were just I was telling you about it offline and I thought I'd just start recording while you criticised my background studio. I, I, I thought, you know, you were looking awfully more professional today. Um, oh, wait a sec. Am I on the right channel? Yeah, my... Sorry, do you want to keep that in? Yeah, let's keep, let's keep going. Let's keep that in, yeah. I just want to make sure I'm on the right mic. Yeah, I was thinking, like, you're looking awfully more <laughs> professional today, Max. Like, have you lost weight? Have you got, like, a new suit? It's not have you had the slimming effect of Christmas lights. Have you got your eye, eyebrows done? You know, where my uh, hairdressers now? I've never had this question posed to me before. But they asked me, do you want your eyebrows done? It's like, what the hell do you mean? Like, eyebrows done? Yeah. Mm. I'm at that point in my life. Yeah, you, you apparently look like that, that person that wants their eyebrows done. But, yeah, my, my effect is the slimming effect of Christmas lights. I've, if anything, got fatter over the last week. But... <laughs> You know, yeah. I'm just leaning into it. Yeah, I'm. I'm just because I think, um, when you're a father, it's good to be. You always tell a good dad because they're a fat dad. <laughs> um, they're like more cushy, more 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 plump. Like my my kid loves punching me and kicking me. So I, I, if I was like thin and bony or muscular, I'd worry I'd hurt his foot as he was kicking me in the stomach. <laughs> With your strong stature. With my, with my rock hard, yeah, my usual rock hard st uh, stature, yeah. Yeah, well, I suppose the filters that you were saying you, you can now put on your videos that <laughs> tone you up or change the twinkle so, um, in your eye. It's cap, yeah, it's cap cut. I've been using, and, and my patrons have really seen the difference because I'm able to put, uh, so in the Ultramarine tutorial I've just done recently, Titus, I've got footage of Space Marine playing in the beginning, and oh my god, like, I, I don't want to watch the tutorial afterwards, I just want to watch more Space Marine 2. Horrible selling point, but I mean, after that intro, like, oh my god, like, your heart's thudding, and then I go into, okay, this is how you paint blue, like, it's a very big shift in gears, but I've been enjoying the hell out of it, but, okay, anyway, they have got, like, AI on there, which allows you to like tone up your face a little bit, change your, uh, the co complexion of your skin. Uh, it allows you to uh, add teeth whitening and brightness in your eye. So I've been, I've been, yeah, whacking all those things up. Fair, fair. Well, I agree. What, except for us just messing around, can people expect on this issue, Miles? What's on the menu? In this issue, we'll be talking about how we've been messing around this past week. Uh, we'll be um, looking over the uh, best portions of Paul Sawyer's tenureship of mm -hmm. White Dwarf and uh, give a little bit more information about that uh, and the, the, the charity that he's uh, uh, currently contributing towards. Uh, and then we'll be ending the episode on an absolute bombshell. We'll be talking about the forgotten treasures of Forge World, all those old weird ass kits that they released and just seem to have like, blinked out. Uh, so we'd be pondering in the past. I mean, it's very much our thing, right? A hobby hammer thing. Talking about how good the old days were. Talking about Forge World. And talking about, hit, uh, like, forgotten treasures. A little bit yeah. like this show. So that's on the agenda for today. Well, we're already at point of forgotten treasure of this show. Forgotten treasure, yes. Yes. Uh, but I would like to say, today we are sponsored by Shandy Bass. <laughs> yeah. If... If you're looking to produce a professional website in today's challenging marketplace, or if you're looking for a VPN, drink Shandy Bass. <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. Mm. Right. Yeah, well, shall we start off with potentially the biggest news of the week, which is the news that has come out about Paul Sawyer? Yeah. Because I think um... it's something that certainly, for me, it was like, it's shocking in that he's, he, this will have a massive effect, obviously, on his family. And I, I suppose we've not said it. Paul Sawyer has come down with terminal brain cancer, essentially. Yeah. Um, and he's got a, a, a year to live, approximately. 
Yeah, he's got roughly a year to live. Uh, and if you don't know who this man was, he, uh, where, where I was introduced to him, he was the editor-in-chief of White Dwarf for what I consider like the glory years of White Dwarf. He was one of the first participants on the Tale of Four Warlords, Tale, Tale of Gamers. Um, he, he, oh, God, what to say about him? Um, he was... He was always a very lucid, insightful voice. Uh, you always felt like he was speaking to you as a human being and not trying to just sell you stuff. Mm. Uh, he was genuinely interested in the hobby. And uh, like his uh, work on his white uh, scars and his uh, beastman and his chaos, yeah, okay. uh, they, they just remain seminal for me. I still refer back to them whenever. I mean, with this uh, chaos project I'm dealing with, I went back to those old issues and I read through all his... Um, Path to, uh, uh, Path to Glory issues, yeah. And even today, even though it's out of uh, production and it's not in the right uh, uh, edition, it is well worth going back and reading over because it's just entertaining. He, he is just one of those very warm, friendly human beings. You feel like no matter where you're from, what your beliefs are, you just get along with. Yeah. Uh, yeah one, and... one of the good ones. Yeah, he, and he was shaping, I think, to a vast many of us in our outlook on wargaming and approach to it from yeah. those early days like it was when i got into the hobby it was the path to glory days mm. it's actually the first episode of path to glory it was the first white yeah. dwarf that i bought mm -hmm. and in doing that it's shaped my wargaming experiences as i've yeah. been going forward um he then went on to co-found warlord games obviously mm -hmm. produces a bolt action um and they are running the Sergeant Sawyer charity figure, of which yes. all profits will go to. So it's for the brain tumor charity, um, which is definitely worth giving. It's ten pounds for a model, and I think definitely worth everyone at home, even with a passing mm. sort of thing, to just chip into this. And as well, there is a GoFundMe page for Paul's family that essentially can help make his fi yes. final days easier. Both of these things will be linked below in the description uh, of this. So if you do want to contribute, buy yourself a miniature uh, that goes towards the Brain Tumor uh, charity uh, or direct or, or give directly to Paul Sawyer and his family, uh, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Or if you're not in a financial situation to do that because we all live with our own struggles, repost it doesn't have to be this fine uh, we'll, we'll put up the original post um god that that feels so awkward saying like repost this video to, no 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 well i think get the, the link and repost that okay yeah yeah, repost yeah. That. we will provide the um, link for people to be able to repost yes, the original and then post the link yes uh be, because if, if you if you can't contribute it's actually fine you have no idea how much it helps just doing that because not only does it help uh, share that link, but if enough people do it, uh, the algorithm will pick up on it and amplify the message. So it helps in ways that you may not readily appreciate. Um, so yes, that's that's some really sad news. Okay, favorite Paul Sawyer moment that you can remember? What what what's your favorite off the top of your head? Wait, it's the it's the path to glory when Valdrek progresses through. <laughs> his campaign and I always remember the conversion of Valrec and it's such a minor detail but the conversion uh -huh. of Valrec and seeing taking a character through its own story getting placed mm -hmm. upon the chariot and how he converted the whip for Valrec with spines down the yeah. whip actually mm -hmm. weirdly was a big thing for me yeah. of like oh it's not just it doesn't have to just be a one off game like I entered after RPG had sort of been taken out of the games Mm -hmm. And seeing that, and like, oh, this is actually where it, where it's ended up from, where it's come from, and how you can still be. carry it through, and just showing yeah. that sort of love of what you're doing through that. I, like, I don't know why that sticks, that why that particularly sticks out to me, but that's the bit. Yeah. Um. So, so for me, weirdly enough, it's not as white scars. It's not as chaos project. It's. During the first run of Tale of Four War Gamers, oh, the Tale of Four Warlords, I can't. Uh, yeah, what, Tale of Four Gamers. Tale of Four. It's that. Down. It's that thing that you've used over and over again in all of yeah, your, yeah, all of your yeah. videos. I, I, yeah, I, I've done a thing on um, <laughs> uh, for, for my own things. Yeah, Tale of Four Gamers. 
uh, towards the end of his Beastman project, um, he's spent the money for that month, but he wants something uh, to unify his war band around. And when he was driving along the road, he stopped, jumped out of his car, and he got like three rocks that he created as herdstone. And he got like wire chain and he put skulls on it. And he talked about whenever he gets a victory, his bray herd would scrawl something new on this rock. Um, that's that's the bit that sticks out to me. That's the bit that's that sticks cool. out. To me. That's cool. Yeah. Paul yeah. Sawyer. If you want to put your favorite Paul Sawyer uh, moments down below, we'd love to love to read them. Uh, just pure nostalgia trip. But yes, anything you can contribute, anything you can share, I'm sure it'd be appreciated. Mm. Okay, should we move on to the next subject? Yeah. 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 So, let's go on to your Space Marine 2. Have you played it yet? Have you played Space Marine 2? I have, yeah. I've played it up to the point where I can change the shoulder pauldron. So I'm very pleased with myself. I'm, I'm desperately trying to play as much as I can uh, to play as a Black Legionnaire uh, in like multiplayer mode, I think you could do it in. Again, I'm very vague on what I can and can't do in this game, but I'm hoping I could get to the point where I could at least play as a Black Legionnaire at some point. Why is that? Uh, is it like segmented that you can't just immediately go in and play any? No, you need to play a little bit of the game to access the area where you can change your outfit. Uh, and then you need to go into a PvP mode, but then you need to buy a... Again, I, I haven't had much of a chance to play this game. I'm sure there are people are screaming at the screen like it's so easy, you idiot. All you need to do is like play six hours of the campaign up, and then down, you can play wherever up, you down, want. Left, right, circle, R1, R2. Yes. And then it's yeah. just unlocked for everything. So a lot of people won't get that. Yeah, game cheats. <laughs> um, oh, God, one of my favorites was the uh, game, game cheats you could do in GTA. Uh, in in yeah, what's the one before Vice City? You could do it. You could get like a tank. That you can GTA make everyone three riot. before Vice City. Yeah, dude, that was peak gaming. Like PS two, make everyone riot around you. You're in a tank blowing stuff up. Um, and it feels a little bit like that in Space Marine two. You do feel like a tank. You feel like you're thundering around, smashing stuff up. Uh, I I think the only negative you can say about this game is that what I've seen is just too short. It's around six hours long. And I've, I know people who have... I mean, Joe, he's completed it in the weekend. Yeah, yeah, we had uh, a couple of people in the group complete it. Like, it came out on, the, yeah. was it the Wednesday? And by Saturday, they uh -huh. completed it. And then done. Yeah. I hope the spurs on the creators to see that there is a market for this and they will create another one, a longer one, something a little bit more fleshed out. I would love to play a much longer campaign. <laughs> a, a PvP, I'm sure, is great. Um yeah, I say that having only played like 20 minutes of the game. Um, yeah, do you not think they'll just do it all in DLC, as is the standard model? I, You know what? I like this game. I wouldn't mind paying for it. Uh, yeah. I, I, If there are games you genuinely enjoy, uh, it, it doesn't feel like this game is trying to rip me off with microtransactions. I'm not having to pay for like the different helmets. No, you have to play the game to unlock them. Um, if they come up with DLCs, yeah, fine. I'll buy them. I'll pay it. it. It's a great game. It works fantastically. It's not broken. Graphics are unbelievable. Um, and on normal setting for me, it is just challenging enough to be engaging, but not overwhelming for yeah. somebody who's catching like five, ten minutes here and there uh, in a very like sleep addled state. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just a shame, I suppose, that you can't put it on a harder setting and then spawn a load of sports cars with machine cannons <laughs> i hope they come up with stuff like dreadnoughts and uh, terminators I'd to love stomp to around terminator. in them armor. i suppose even if it was just a skin like i know it's yeah. it seem a bit weird but if you just play in one player and just do it as yeah. a skin yeah just do, do that um because yeah they have terminators in primaris yeah you got uh you could play as a redemptor dreadnought um yeah, I just want more stuff added into the game. And I'm, I, I'm hoping they're making enough money. They feel like it'll make it worth their while. Another great thing I'm seeing as well, like in the wider community, uh, I'm seeing like game journalists, like really getting into this game and, and like tweeting stuff, for, uh, like uh, uh, one of the cherubim. Mm. Uh, somebody's taking a screen grab of that and he just put it in here like W2F. <laughs> yeah, like what? Like, how do you begin explaining what that is to to somebody 
um, yeah, it, it's great that more people have been introduced into this world, into this crazy ass world that we all love so much. <laughs> somewhere, um, somewhere started it, with Christianity and then getting to the cherub being It feels together. authentic. <laughs> It feels authentic as well. It doesn't feel like it's a cash grab. It doesn't feel like it's a, uh, it's my, my fear was there would be watered down from the first one. It is ultraviolet. It is, oh, it's just, just such a good game. Such a good game to play. I'm trying to resist buying a console because I've not had a console since like 2003. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to resist buying a console and mate, buying but, it because I'll never get, I'm not getting any work done, mate. I'm not getting any did work done. Did you buy a PS5? I, all I did was watch Netflix on it for like two months. When I first bought it, <laughs> you might hear of me that I bought a, a PS5 next week. We will yeah. see. We will see. So you've been doing something adjacent to this. Yes, I decided to. Well, in all honesty, I'm trying to ride the crest of a wave. Um, cynical, so, gen- cynical. yeah, generally my Instagram page will uh, with the metrics it will get around 250 to 300 thousand people per week doing yeah. it cool numbers this month without doing anything different without doing anything out of the ordinary i haven't had any clips go viral or anything crazy it's shot up to eight hundred fifty thousand views Oof. maybe mm. i should or paint a titus just just paint just guess just tag anything space marine just tag anything space marine yeah so i am trying to ride the crest of the wave uh i've got a couple of uh, and it so happened they dovetailed with the commission that i was doing so i sent this uh, Titus custom one-off sculpt. Uh, no, I'm not sending the SDL off to anybody. Uh, I, I printed this up uh, and painted it, uh, put it together, painted it uh, for for a masterclass on the Patreon, which is available right now. So if you want to learn how to do the blue, the non-metallic, uh, the skin tone, it's all in there. Um, and I've also got a rather big bust I'll be painting over the next couple of weeks. Oh, well. nice, nice. Oh, sorry, I've. I've close the window that you told me what to say about oh. Titus one sec so here we go sorry your craft is sublime wow I never thought a human could paint paint this well you are my oh, hero Max, Miles okay. not just because you're a good painter really? but because you're no, a fantastic you human being uh, yeah he's well, it's, always, it's always nice to be told that now and again <laughs> even though it doesn't really cover everything I do that's fine that's yeah. fine no it's in all seriousness though the usage of like high like highlights around when you really zoom into it, and even oh, like yeah. through the chipping and utilization of that as a highlight. It's tiny. It's, well, it's it's a small miniature. You have to remember just how small it is. Uh, and I think we live in in uh, like the social media age, right? You just blast stuff out. I do it myself. You see people's work. Oh, that's nice, and you just flick on through. No, really zoom in on it, like super zoom Give on me the a face part on and the I'll metallic. Super zoom super zoom yes super zoom on on it and you can see like all the little details i was able to introduce into it uh really enjoyed painting this piece uh as a one-off display piece as well i could play more aggressively like the light and the shadow um so gaming pieces i generally do in uh, true metallic metal because they seem in a variety of different uh lighting conditions and the metallic pigment plays off them a little bit nicer than the static non-metallic but because this is a one-off piece just I've only really photographed it from a couple of angles because the light sources only work in those couple of uh, uh, different angles. So photographing it like that, it works. It, it was nice to be able to um, indulge in a little non-metallic metal. Yeah, and the face as well looks spot on. Good. Is that? Have you painted that in the same way as you were showing us on the, the face course? Yeah. Uh, I stripped out the esoteric stuff with the green and the blues and the magentas. Um, right, okay. So uh, th- this is a slightly more simplified process. That I sh- so I showed you like the full gamut. This is the full whack because we get to halfway and I say, okay, if you just get to this point and then do the filter layer, that's fine. You'll end up with a phenomenal result, which this exemplifies. But then I wanted to show you like the entire range of detail you can get out of it. So yes, yeah, it was. Oh, nice. Yeah, really like it, Miles. Really like it. And Good. obviously, Thank don't forget much. to tag this video with Space Marine and Space Marine 2. All the yep. others to ride that, que- that qu- quest. Crest. <laughs> right, <laughs> the crest of the wave. Yeah. 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 Well, I have been doing the opposite. 
Well, not quite the opposite. I've been. I have not been riding any waves. I've been two <laughs> weeks behind the Secundian wave. I did release something at the time for Secundus, but I've been two weeks behind the Secundian wave and making my Zomatalis board. It is looking sharp, though, this board. It is looking. I, I, I've got board envy. Yeah, well, it's one of them. That it's, it's something that I've been thinking about for a long while. The, the board on the bottom that I'm circling on the screen for all the viewers, I'd actually made that about four years ago when the Dark Uprising set originally came out. <laughs> and then it's, I've just been inspired to redo the entire thing. So I'm actually... I'm going to end up doing a video on it when I can mm -hmm. get to get... It's so hard to film. I think we said this last time. It's so hard to film something like this where you're like not quite knowing what you're actually going to do and that decision-making process because mm -hmm. actually it's just largely like, does this work? Does that work? Does this work? But doing the gantries, actually quite, yeah. quite nice. The new Forge World set, actually really good especially for something like this where it's mm -hmm. do you know the pipe connections that they've got across where you get like a double length pipe and a single length pipe section it was really good for adding structural integrity to it without mm -hmm. compromising sight lines like uh, particularly yeah. out of all the things it just allowed it to like have <clears throat> this ridiculous overhang and then I've added stuff to it with like yeah. Green like green stuff pipe rollers and uh -huh. loads of H beam or I beam plastic card stuff and then dangerously heating up plastic hard rod with a lighter and bending them as they go around. So that that is taking up a lot of my time this week. Uh, it it looks superb. It looks absolutely freaking superb. I mean, uh, we've talked about this before how Necromunda uh, it, it's not only the characters you deal with, but the terrain is a character in and of itself. Um, yeah, looks so good. Yeah. So that is that has been taking over basically my life, like all my thought process until like sort of twelve, one o'clock in the morning every night for a week. <laughs> and other other than that, I've been getting lax on my. I need to paint my empire for January. Because I'm going to do an Empire Civil War sort of filming. And also doing Istvan 3 at the start of October with the old Road to okay. Terror crew. So we're going to do like six games across two game days, all the legendary battles. And he's just been preparing for that with, because you need iterators and stuff like that. So I've got like the dandies from Necromunda, you know, with the big coifs. Oh, I'm going to be using yeah. Them. Yeah. So that that is me caught up on what I've been doing, fairly, fairly fast, fairly fast. Yeah. What 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 we've been up to? Um. So shall we head into the meat of the conversation? Shall we have a look at the forgotten treasures of Forge World? Yes. Let us do that. Okay. Let's so yeah, I've got up the first picture, and what we're going to do is work in ascending order. Yes, I feel like we're putting on our Adeptus Explorator hats here. We're going to be delving into the vaults of Forge World uh, as Archaeotech Hunters. Yeah, and it, the, Earth. the first one I selected, Miles, was a meagre sandbag emplacement. Because, so, yeah, it, yeah th it's th very th mundane. This is the kind of release... So, sorry, you go, go ahead. God damn, sorry. God damn! <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I, fuck, I fucked you there. I fucked you there. <laughs> I really yeah. fuck you. No, okay, it's, no, it's very mundane, but I think it captures the spirit of Forge World around, but I don't know, like 2003 or something like that, where they were just producing these random things that yeah. added character to the games above and beyond what Games Workshop could do. You'd find this in the Citadel Journal, and you kind of go, oh, yeah, okay, that's that's a thing. <laughs> but it wouldn't be like for me. I'm not into terrain, so it'd be like a, a mere shrug for me. Yeah, it look. I, I feel like I could make that by myself. So why would I bother? It's only in my dotage that I can go back and appreciate the, like the detail and the fact that you don't need to go out and make it yourself. You can just buy it pre-made and boom. Yeah, well, I think this is why obviously they don't do it now because, as you say, you can make this yourself. Like I do make these things myself now. Yeah, but buckle up because there's going to be a few 
<laughs> a few terrain pieces in this like run of things. And it, I've scored them quite lowly, like compared to some of yeah. the stuff that you sent over to me. But uh-huh. like it's just it's definitely I think a formative part of the cool stuff that Forge World did. Oh, I have done. Uh, this is very early Forge World because they didn't really make miniatures. They made terrain pieces. They made additions to tanks. Um, yeah, and there was nothing. There wasn't like prime marks or anything at this stage. It was very early Forge World, and they f- felt like they were finding their feet as a company and, and trying to create a signature for themselves. Found their feet. Had found their feet with the best stuff. Next yeah. is the Cities of Death, like sort of L tile. For the yeah, for the, re- the again terrain. I told you to buckle up. So I, I, characteristic I of the architecture hard. that we come to it's see. Quite hard for the. Going on. It's quite hard <laughs> for the mod. It's quite, it's quite hard for the modern audience to really take in just how you, special it was because we had uh, like very small pieces of plastic terrain around that time. We didn't have like the cities of death plastic stuff like we do today or the ability to 3D print. So these larger scale bi- buildings, uh, from what I can remember, these were really expensive as well. Yeah, I think at the time there was like 48 quid or something. Like, oh. That pops into my head, which uh, yeah. at that time, like Space Marine Tactical Squad was 15 when I yeah. remember this being 48. So you could get maybe like, you could get two predators for that price. Mm-hmm. So, and I always thought, why would I bother buying terrain when I don't play in my house? I go to Games Workshop to play. They already mm. have terrain. I go to gaming clubs to play. They already have terrain. Why would I uh, buy this, like one piece of terrain, uh, instead of five tactical squads like I used to be able to afford? I see. I always went with, and like, I think it's why I so enjoy terrain now and building terrain, like the mm. the ZM or the the boards that I built with the big ter- like buildings that you can see on the battle reports that i do mm. the reason that i enjoy that i think is because i didn't really i went to games workshop manchester they made a load of terrain but when i was playing mm. with my mates it wasn't at a club it mm. was just on our bedroom floor and we was always missing terrain and i'd be like oh god i really want to recreate the stuff that they have in white dwarf in the cities mm. of death book that we've done previously and this is it yeah. moisture condenser my stupid. Pro- I was going to say, I promise our audience it does get juicier. The we're not just going to look. It's at- ascending order. It's ascending order. If you if you're already bored terrain. of this list, skip to about halfway because we crescendo. <laughs> yes, yeah. don't but- don't miss the moisture uh, container though. No, why why does this make your list of your top five four drill releases? Uh, I, I love it because releases? well, it's not five. I think there's eighteen in the list that between 18, the, both the of, top between 18. the both of us. <laughs> between the both of us because we thought we said we'd run through them quick this is this i love this for its usefulness it's uselessness sorry it's usefulness in terrain but it's uselessness in the fact that it's so mini i'm on hen no this is all bottom of the list remember this is all bottom of the list yes it's where aragorn so what, jumps off what was aim on hen yeah it's a Lord of the I'm, rings piece yeah where i'm on where aragorn jumps off onto the Urukai at the end of the Fellowship of the Ring. Mm-hmm. Next, the four foot Imperial I, I feel like Stronghold we're walls. Through these. Yeah. Well it's all terrain and as you pointed out, people would be bored by all this terrain. Yeah. But... It's, it's not juicy, right? But it is a good representation of all the early You don't think world. this is juicy? You don't think this is juicy? Oh my god. It's not juicy. You were it's such terrain. a horrible it's kind person. of like mm, it looks nice, but I'm not a terrain. This guy. might be the for all the listeners out there, this might be the last cast issue because <laughs> if, I don't know whether me and Miles will get on after this. You don't find you don't find these city these, these walls, and maybe that's why I become an Iron Warriors player because yeah. I find these amazing, amazing. It's like bucket list style things if you got to play on one of these. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Properly, like you could do the Siege of Terror with this, man. How many of these would you need to buy? <laughs> it, um, yeah, probably play it in epic scale with a 40k style. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that so you could do, isn't it? Yeah, I think you'd have to, yeah. Uh, it, it just doesn't, like, get my pecker up. Like, and trenches as well. <laughs> but, but you as don't like the trenches! You don't like I mean, the as trenches! As a warrior player, I can see the appeal because no, your ancestors no. probably dug all this. No, it's I, I'm, Vrax, just, man. I'm not a big this one is... for trenches or walls. 
Jesus, man. The, this makes people get hard on the internet. This is peak Forge World stuff. These, this, like the set for the trenches goes for like a thousand pounds sometimes on eBay because uh, people are so after it. It's, oh, man, man. I, you're not going to like the Amphilion base as well, are you? Right, let's just get through it. He's going to say can, no. He's going to say no. I can. I, I can appreciate this a little bit more because it feels like uh, Alien or Aliens. You know, yeah. you dock on the planet, you go, because that's what the, the, the Amphilian base was, right? You were mm. going, it was the first time we saw uh, ZM uh, rules, how you're mooching around. Uh, did they have like an internal piece that could you lift them up and play Yeah, yeah it? all of them were, yeah. you could take up. And these actually STL files for both the trenches that we just saw last and the Amphilian mm. things that are really like, true to the originals because obviously they're not available anymore yeah and you could yeah. fight your way through the the original gene stealer containment tanks came from here that mm -hmm. then later got put into the objective markers things for the old the futures on the talis board but yeah right let's get on to the sentinel power lifter then this is at your request so you can't blame me for this yes now this Look. is where the list actually starts getting good this is where it starts to <laughs> no it's not that's oh my god i'm I can't believe it. I can't believe it. <laughs> I can feel a blood vessel bursting in your head. Mate, do you yeah. want to take it off so that you, my cap off so that you can see my throbbing vein, the Y shaped <laughs> yeah, vein. Yeah, I'd love to see a throbbing yeah. vein. Our <laughs> audience would like nothing else but to it's, see a throbbing vein. I think the light's a bit too overexposed on my fod, but <laughs> <laughs> it's the Christmas yeah. lights in the background is throwing out your white balance. <laughs> yeah, I can't really see it, but like Jesus, man, <laughs> I cannot believe. <laughs> Honestly, honestly, I can't believe the trenches and the unfilling. This gets the juices flowing a little bit, and this is quite a rare miniature. This is the kind of stuff, again, uselessness, I think, is, is the running theme through uh, early Forge Roll stuff. How it, it's cool, it's awesome, but it doesn't really have in game purposes. Uh, more so when you grow up, you, you start collecting things like iterators, you start collecting objective markers. Uh, you st you start collecting like the ancillary things. I think they're ahead of their time in a lot of ways, because this as a three D print, amazing. This is the kind of thing that you don't really want to shoot like spend money on, but you want in game. Uh, and this is the kind of like uselessness stuff that they used to produce on. Well, I, I think it's great again for terrain. Like I know you saying yeah. like, oh, you had a club to go to, but mm. clubs have shit terrain, frankly. Like yes, mo in the majority do. of clubs and yeah. what's the point of painting your models amazingly mm. and then put it, putting them on a board where your buildings yeah. are made oh, out of books yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god really classic. really because yeah. that used to be the classic I, I thing yeah, you make your hills out of books and then it's all square and oh, oh no but power lifter sentinel as terrain for like necromunda especially now Oh God! It, Hive yes. Secundus with this, yeah. Wait, so it's like Ripley's. Yeah. Cause it's obviously the inspiration, right? And you've got like it, yeah, oh, crab God, yeah. guy, sort of lifting vibes. But is this something that you'd run out and pay four draw prices for? Uh, I I yes. argue not. This this is the kind of thing you three D print. <laughs> so in Rip, a lot of the yes. in a lot of ways, the designers were well ahead of their time because they were designing this stuff. They wanted this stuff in their own games. Uh, and that's why they produced it. I mean, a similar thing with the next item. That we I, mean, I, I, I bought a fucking Atlas. The Trojan, the Trojan <laughs> with the trailers. Yeah, like, uh -huh. amazing, Again, amazing. Like, uh, amazing miniatures, but very little in-game. I mean, I remember uh, when Warmaster came out. Uh, I remember thinking, this, this is like a cool game, cool miniatures, but I have no use for it because I, I have... I only have like a, a limited amount of uh, uh, pocket money to spend. Why would I try and invest in the game that <laughs> I know is not going to go anywhere rather than buy like the extra character, the extra Well, there's squad. still like 12 people playing Warmaster. What are you talking about? Sorry. Sorry to the <laughs> Warmaster community. Similar kind of thing here. It looks amazing. I'm glad it exists. It looks gorgeous. Would I ever buy it? Probably <laughs> not. Do you know what? But I'm we're, glad it exists. There's going to be a big flip, like a big inversion of how we're reacting to these models by the end of the list. Because this, to me, Henry from the Hobby Butterflies that I have on my um, uh -huh. show quite a lot, playing games, has made versions of these trailers. 
because he loves right. them so much. Yeah. Like okay, he's made STL. versions of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I mean that he's as in like he's made the STL. So that's if he if he just worked those hours and bought, he could buy them for less time, but so that he mm. could reproduce them ad finitum has made them because they're just iconic pieces of in the background of all of these vignettes and black mm. and whites that we get all over the books mm. these are the things that add the atmosphere so if mm. you want your mm. games to look yeah, like exactly. those actual artworks mm. from the book you need mm. like you you don't need to get stuff like this fucking motorbikes <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah you need you need things like this that add that sense of reality to the games to get a cinematic experience mm. So, yeah, we basically get the, not the same thing again, but a tank recovery vehicle mm -hmm. in the form of the Atlas on the Lehman Rush chassis, mm -hmm. rather than the Trojan on the Chimera chassis. And Great. these have become like hardcore collector's items now, because I don't think they sold that. So weirdly, um, if you look on uh, second edition Old Hammer uh, mm -hmm. or, or on eBay, it's not Space Marines that are the highest priced units. It's the Metal Goblins that they released, the Metal Gretchen. Yeah. Because everyone bought the base game and they come with like a billion Gretchen and you play with them. There's no need to go out and buy the unique metal ones. So like five people in the world bought them and they go for ridiculous amounts of money on eBay now. It's the same with these items. Because you see them, it looks cool, but then when you uh, get a little bit older, you start to want to introduce Pining. a little bit more atmosphere to your game. Yeah, you want to buy stuff like this? But it's like, it scratches that itch that when you get into middle age, do you know like these two avenues that you yeah. go down in middle age, you either really get into World War One and Two history, or you uh -huh. start barbecuing. Yeah. And this, yeah. as a sci-fi war gamer, scratches that, mm -hmm. scratches that itch of what you really want to get into. Same. I consider these retirement projects. <laughs> I love, so if the kit was available now, I'd buy it. And I wouldn't touch it until I retired, because the, I, 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 whenever I build and paint something, I always do it with an objective in mind, either to display uh, an artwork, display a skill that I have, or uh, to play something in game. I, I wouldn't dedicate that much time to terrain, but I can appreciate its value. Like but this, you could much do a more military than a modeling by diorama. Expand your Mid mind. Expand your mind. Military modeling. Exactly. Minds. And by the time I retire, I will be fully expanded. <laughs> um, but right now, I got bare things to do in my life, like painting busts. Well, I've been I've been doing atlases and trojans. Yeah, well, we've got the commissar bust. Well, this is useless. This is completely nonsensical. Absolutely. So, for <laughs> younger members, they might not realise that Forge World again ahead of their time useless. Uh, but they produced a line of large miniatures, a line of busts, a line of single piece uh, display miniatures. Now the bust market really wasn't well established in the early noughties. Uh, I, I think cool, even companies like Cool Mania are not struggled with these. They, they were all selling gaming pieces at the time. Yeah. It's only since, oh, I don't know, what I want to say like 2012-ish, that this market has really started to climb. Uh, I, I had a conversation with the uh, uh, lead of Forge World, and unfortunately, these are never coming back. Uh, they believe that uh, there's a very limited window that they'd release one. Uh, people would buy it, stash it underneath their bed. They'd release another, and they wouldn't buy it. Uh, the attitude of uh, the head of Forge World, unfortunately, will not support these being seen ever again. But absolutely, I 100% agree, useless in terms of game. But as a modeling piece, as an artistic expression, as an artistic challenge yeah. for someone like me, I would love to get these busts back or variations of these busts. Yeah. So I'm meant to have been flicking through all the busts while we're saying this because I was on the Commissar. Now we, we're okay. on the scale. Yeah. Flick through and them. Flick through them. I mean, you're seeing uh, Darren Latham at the moment on Instagram. He's designed his own Primaris bust and he's painting them up. Uh, the bust you're seeing people print out uh, uh, like War, Warhammer uh, heresy busts as well. Yes. So you take SDL files, blow them up. I mean, I got this thing that I want to paint. There is much more of a market for this stuff now. Problem is, back in the day, I'm not going to buy a bust when I could buy a Space Marine unit instead. 
I, Again, you're so head, focused head on like what's useful for gaming, despite the fact that you never play. Yeah, <laughs> surely uh, you'd want kid. like a Trojan and a and an atlas to put in the background to like take pictures of your f fabulous project. But when, when I was a kid, I was playing a lot more. I didn't really care. I mean, Instagram was a thing. Social media wasn't a thing. I didn't care about that stuff. I wanted things to be practical. I only had a limited budget. You know, I'm not uh, like I haven't got Max's wealth. I'm going like millionaire <laughs> status. Yeah, I had to that's what it is. budget my money and very carefully apply it to any purchases <laughs> that I made. Uh, and I thought, okay, I could I, I could save up my money and buy a bust that would wouldn't look great because I didn't have the skills to support it. Or I could buy a space marine squad or an elder guardian unit to play in get with lots of star cannons in third edition. They were great. I see. What I used to do is I'd get my lunch money from school, right. and then I'd not eat for right. like at lunchtime for months at a time. Right. Just so I could save up that extra money to be able to buy this useless stuff from Forge World, it, uh, I'd put it all in a pot and it'd accumulate all of the pennies. A child <laughs> depriving itself of nutrients to grow in order to buy Forge World. Yeah, yeah. So maybe, I'm... maybe I would have been taller than you if I'd have not been buying Forge World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. St Forge World stunted my growth. There you go. I'm, that, I'm not sure it hold up in court, but that's what I'm going. That's with. the tagline for the episode. Okay. Um, Chaos War Mama. Chaos War Mama. I think we're going Chaos, to be back onto the same line. This is a mutual choice. This is a mutual choice. I mean, yes, it doesn't have the most practical applications, but my God, is it a cool miniature? It and doesn't anymore. What? Anything? Yeah. What do you mean it doesn't have practical applications? It was 675 points. And you could put an aspiring champion with war banner and a chaos lord on there, and your chaos lord would get taken down by the trunk to fight in a challenge, and then put back up with the trunk. And it's operated like a giant man. These were so how cool. much? How much? Did, how much did it cost? Oh, too much. Too much. Yeah, never had one that, of these. That's the impracticality of it. I, I don't think the market was really there to support something like this, where it is now. Perhaps I'm living in an alter dimension. I don't know. Perhaps perhaps I've uh, got the idealistic glasses on. But I think there's there's a market for this kind of stuff now. And uh, you told me before this that they've broken they've the, the mold. mold. They've yeah, lost yeah. the mold. It's lost, just broken. heartbreaking. It's gone. Be because the miniature you see on screen is something that I painted way back when, when I was a little loser. Um, a great miniature, really detailed, uh, fantastic piece to, to put together. Uh, Sad that we can no longer see it, and and in a similar vein, we have the Empire Land ship. Yeah, but like, I've got some like the the mammoth somewhere at my parents. Do you? Oh, it may, in the attic, yeah, somewhere. I've just not had the energy to go and get it back yet. Well, that's our next painting challenge at the studio: paint Max's war mammoth. <laughs> no, no, you can't. You can't get the joy of painting that war mammoth off me. You can't force me to paint it with you just so that you get the joy of painting a war mammoth. Empire Land ship, yeah. though. Not Empire. It's, it's uh, Marienburger. So oh, it's, it's that's right. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I think one of the... I mean, we, we did an episode like Top Fortwell Sculpt. Oh, no, it was Top Primark Sculpt. Um, th this could be up there with one of the best sculpts that Games Workshop have produced. Hmm. It has that Warhammer craziness. You look at it, it's very distinctly Warhammer. When it's painted as well as this, it's visually stunning. It, this is the kind of miniature you look at and think, I want to be involved in that. Whatever that is, <laughs> get me on board. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And it so captures the spirit of the place that it's meant to be from as well. I think the designers have obviously yeah. done a really good job at getting mm -hmm. that Marion Burger look to it with like the pirate yeah. up top because it's the port city but then also mm -hmm. as you say it's got that wackiness that over the top it makes me think of do you remember in the Storm of Chaos book where you've got that massive cannon at Middenheim that's just yeah. well over the top it makes yeah. me think of that artwork should we just stop and I'll get the artwork up so I've got it up it's Ulrich's Thunder and yeah. it's this sort of over the topness uh, yeah, it reminds me of like World War One cannons, uh, because this technology was just being rolled out for the first time. And they didn't really know what would happen, 
and the gases that emitted from discharge would poison the people around it and that you had to be something like 100 meters away before fired with your with cotton wool in your ears and your mouth open and otherwise it would blow out your eardrums <laughs> yeah so like what are you, are you thinking of like the awesome. railway guns but he's, yeah yeah he's yeah. the landship very much captures this sort of ridiculousness of the warhammer world's art yeah uh, put it yeah. straight into model form i think mm-hmm. right again unfortunately lost the mold gone yeah oh yeah whatever to the mold and finally <sighs> this is aegis aquilas we couldn't end off on anything different i don't think no this, this this if we could go back and buy one thing from classic forge i i think it, i mean I, I don't mean to speak on your behalf but it'd be this yes yeah, because of all, this is now the hardest to do in any other way. Yeah. Like, with that mass conversion of a Thunderhawk, or there's some STL files floating about, I think. But otherwise, because this yeah. is something that they'll never do again, right? They're, like, it's yeah. not even like, oh, we'll slightly redirect as a business and do some busts on a one off. It's the Gretchen dilemma again. Because if you have a Thunderhawk and a Thunderhawk transporter, uh, you have a niche product, but then you have a niche within a niche. I, I, I don't think the market is there to sell en masse to, unlike things like, like busts, which I do think could support it. Uh, but my God, I would love to get my hands on this miniature. Yeah. Well, if anyone wants to see one in person, Devil Dog Wargaming, which is Aegis Aquila's, um, like, local gaming oh it's his gaming store is in Tor Bay and he's got one so you can see it there behind the cabinets or in real life maybe you want <laughs> to go steal a Thunderhawk you know where to go <laughs> there you go breaking late at night yeah but what were the rules for this thing so it was like 400 points and you could fit 15 I think it was marines into the front of it and then yeah in Heresy 1, you used to be able to fly onto the board with two rhinos, drop them off. And then you could actually, because of like a rules quirkiness, you could pick mm. some... They, it never said you couldn't pick up an enemy's tank. So you could pick up an enemy <laughs> tank and fly off with it. Like it could, oh. like a raider or two rhinos. Like chassis. That'd be, that's such a power move. Y- yeah, can you... like oh, Prim- Primark in a Spartan... Or death in the land star, raider. Yeah. like prop, yeah, proper Death Star. The Thunderhawk transporter one. flies in, picks it up, and flies It was flies always off. Logar. It was always Logar with Galvo back charging at you in a land raider. You come along, you <laughs> Thunderhawk, pick him up, and just drop him a hundred yards from where he's meant to be. A hundred yeah, yards off the like, board. No, no, you just fly off. off you board. just fly off the board with it because just fly, anything off the board the at the end of the game is dead. That's it. That's how you solve the Horus Heresy. You bring a Thunderhawk transporter in, you pick up Horus in his transport, you fly him into space, let him go. There you go. Heresy done and dusted. We know by Gulliman being able to hold his breath for a bit that that doesn't work. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it wouldn't work on Horus. Oh, well, I tried. <laughs> yeah. I tried. It was a good idea. It was a good idea. Yeah. But, yeah, that is that is the last one of our models, Miles. That is the last pick. Yeah, that was a nice little trip down memory lane. Um, guys out there, guys, gals, what was your favorite niche, uh, useless early Forge World miniature that only you can remember? Like that moisture, trap the moisture such... condenser. <laughs> My God, yeah, what what a great pick that was. Um, <laughs> yeah, really, because I, I told you you'd I, be I, underwhelmed I, by it. I can't even remember that coming out at all. Like, even now, it's going to like, have a hard time sticking in my memory. I've got, uh, so, I've what's got your one niche Forge World release? What was your, uh, if you could go back in time, which product would you buy through Forge World? Leave it in the comments below. Uh, I hope we could do a follow up uh, episode to this. This was fun. Well, we could, let's do a quick shout out next episode. If it's in by the time we next record, if it's in the comments mm-hmm. here, will the most obscure ones, just by our own reasoning, that's what we'll pick out. Yeah. We'll yeah okay up. right we'll, we'll we'll do an honor call okay uh thank you so much everyone for watching that was hobby hammer issue 29 i think so yeah. we'll catch you in the next episode in a issue bit. <laughs>